Hey folks, welcome to Roll of Law. Today I want to talk about the Morals Clause that Wizards of the Coast has included in the 1.2 draft of the OGL. This clause is doing a lot of heavy lifting for Wizards PR team. The first thing it's allowing them to do is to say this is the reason why we have to deauthorize or otherwise revoke the 1.0a version of the OGL. They're saying it doesn't include this Morals Clause and so without that, we can't fight against content that's sexist or racist or homophobic or scary clowns. All of the stuff you hate, we can't do anything about. And so if you really hate that stuff, you have to be okay with us deauthorizing the 1.0a OGL. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we're starting to see Wizards proxies basically implying that criticism of the OGL is itself because people are motivated by sexism or racism or homophobia. It's a massive ad hominem and it's just lazy reasoning because there's so many reasons to be annoyed or upset by the OGL that they're proposing that have nothing to do with these things. And in fact, many of the people who are critical of this clause point out that it is likely to be used in discriminatory or otherwise harmful ways. So let's have a look at the clause itself. We'll also talk a bit about morals clauses generally. Why would you have one of those? What's the point of them? So we'll start by just looking at the clause itself. And this is in section 6F. It reads, no hateful content or conduct. You will not include content in your licensed work that is harmful, discriminatory, illegal, obscene, or harassing, or engage in conduct that is harmful, discriminatory, illegal, obscene, or harassing. We have the sole right to de decide what conduct or content is hateful, and you covenant that you will not contest any such determination via any suit or any le other legal action. All right, that's a pretty broad clause. Now, let's sort of discuss morals clauses, because this is not the first morals clause to ever appear in a contract. In fact, quite famously, Babe Ruth was subject to a morals clause, and that clause was kind of interesting. He promised that he would not consume alcohol during the tenure of his contract, and that also he would not stay up later than 1 o'clock a.m. during the season. And the reason why they put those conditions on him is that they really hoped that he would stop sleeping around. It didn't work. Babe Ruth just slept around earlier in the day, but that was kind of the idea. Now, morals clauses don't tend to appear in most contracts. Most people won't be subject to morals clauses on sort of their, in their typical life. And the reason why is because these tend to be used for things where either your personal fame matters or where you are somehow the representative of something. So a CEO might face a morals clause. But for instance, the janitor probably doesn't have a morals clause in their contract. Uh, somebody who's doing a, an endorsement, like a sports star or a, you know, a movie star who's endorsing a product might have a morals clause because really what they're selling at that point is their personal reputation and the other side doesn't want to buy it if it's going to be tarnished. The thing is, is we don't usually see these in sort of licenses. I own a ton of games on Steam and not one of them has a morals clause that says that they will revoke or at least none of the ones I've looked at. And I'm the weird guy who actually reads those end user license agreements. Uh, I haven't seen any games that say, listen, we're going to revoke your right to play this game if you, you know, happen to do something immoral. Um, if you lease a car, it probably doesn't have a morals clause none of these things tend to have morals clauses. And so it's very unusual that they would try to include one in something that is described as an open game license, because by its very nature, an open game license should be open to everyone, including people we don't like and including people we might find terrible in whatever fashion. I will note that there doesn't appear to be a major issue here. There have been a few products put out that might be a little sort of off and basically the market has handled them because people just didn't want to buy them. 
Uh, nobody's rushing out to put out the next version of Fatal because the first one didn't sell well. Um, that's just, you know, the nature of things. But let's break down what this allows them to control. And the first part we'll look at is actually the last part of this, which says we have the sole right to decide what conduct or content is hateful, and you covenant that you will not contest any such determination via any suit or other legal action. So what this means is that this can apply to literally anything they want. There is no sort of standard for this because they can apply whatever standard they feel like and you have no way to challenge it. So they could, you could literally, you know, put like one joke about a skeleton walks into a bar and, you know, can't drink the beer because it goes right through him and then reprint the skeleton stat block and they could decide that that was obscene or discriminatory against skeletons, I guess. But you'd have no way to challenge that. And that should be concerning because essentially the, the, what this means is that this open game license is in fact something that they can revoke for any reason whatsoever or no reason. They don't need to give you a reason because it's in their sole determination. But even if we got rid of that, this would still be something that I would have an issue with. Because when we start to break down, you know, content that is harmful, discriminatory, illegal, obscene, or harassing, well, what does that mean? Um, that's concerning because let's say I include a group of halflings who like smoking something that is very similar to marijuana. Well, it's legal where I am to smoke marijuana. I'm in Canada. I can just go buy it down the street if I want, um, you know, from a government licensed and regulated store. Uh, but it's not legal federally in the US at this point. So if I write that book, is it going to be illegal? And are they going to revoke my access? I feel like marijuana smoking at this point is not terribly controversial. And certainly in Canada, it's entirely legal. I could sit on my porch and wave to a cop as I smoked and literally no problem. Um, I can grow up to four plants where I am. Again, no problem, but will that get my, uh, you know, will that get this revoked? So that's going to be um, a little difficult. I will note that Wizards of the Coast has already used policies similar to this in their DMs Guild, uh, you know, their license agreement to get rid of content that was focused on LGBT people. Because when we look at the history of what has been considered harmful or obscene or, you know, otherwise bad content, this is included in the past within my lifetime, uh, pro LGBT content, um, all sorts of other things, notably, um, including D and D itself. I grew up during the whole satanic panic thing. I actually had uh, books taken away from me. I was told that I could not play Dungeons and Dragons at my school because it was believed to be harmful. So when I see content that says, listen, you can't put out stuff that we think is harmful. Um, I know how harmful this can actually be to the hobby because it made it hard for me to play Dungeons and Dragons because people thought that was dangerous. Uh, content about firearms. Lots of people right now are pushing to have fewer firearms in movies, fewer firearms in books and so forth. So if I want to play an artificer or, you know, make a book about gunslingers, will that be seen as harmful in the near future? Will they just be able to deauthorize my book, even if it's successful? Uh, but this goes beyond that. It actually doesn't just include the stuff that you put into your book. It also says that you're not allowed to engage in conduct that is harmful, discriminatory, illegal, obscene, or harassing. So that means that they propose to regulate your private life as well. Keep in mind what I said about, you know, within my lifespan, it has been illegal for, you know, various uh, LGBT related activities. And I say various because they tried to ban just about everything that they could to try to ban the sort of underlying 
concept. Um, right now, we are seeing in the U.S. Um, abortion bans. Are you going to lose your access to the OGL if you had an abortion? Um, it's a legitimate question at this point. Um, can wizards promise that you won't? Uh, smoking in public, that's certainly harmful. Is that going to be something that causes you to lose uh, your access under the OGL? Um, we don't know. We don't know how they're going to enforce this and what the standards are going to be. And in fact, um, we don't know, even if we trusted wizards today, which I don't, um, you shouldn't trust them in future because there is no guarantee that Wizards of the Coast doesn't end up in the hands of somebody who might be really, really left-wing or really, really right-wing. You know, somebody with really strong beliefs and decides that a whole bunch of stuff is harmful, even though the player base may not consider it so. This is really dangerous, and it invites Wizards to essentially police uh, the behavior of everybody who writes for them. I don't know why they'd take this on, because it's one thing to say, listen, uh, Babe Ruth is our star player. Uh, we need to manage his image because that's selling, you know, that's putting a lot of butts in seats. That's selling a lot of playing cards, you know, for trading cards. That's, you know, that's selling jerseys, all of that stuff. Um, but that's not really the case if I'm just including the skeleton stat block or the description of a particular poison. Nobody's really going to hold that against wizards, especially if they don't say we're going to police this. In fact, really the only way that they become responsible for that content is if they include a clause saying that they're responsible for that content. I'm really not sure why they choose to do that. Um, it concerns me. I don't think, um, I think the potential harms here, uh, greatly outweigh the benefits. And I don't see why we should trust wizards, uh, with this kind of, kind of power. I, you know, they're saying that they're going to use it to stifle content that is, you know, discriminatory or illegal. Wizards doesn't exactly have the best, uh, track record on that. You know, when you think of which company was it that decided that within the, you know, context of elves, there was going to be a special group of evil elves and it would be the black ones. Well, that's wizards, you know, and that's D and D's history. Uh, when you say which group decided to make a group of, you know, monkey people who were happy slaves, that was Wizards of the Coast. You can't say that they've been really nailing this idea, even by their own standards. This, this clause makes no sense in terms of it's applied to a group who we would normally not think of being subject to a morals clause. And the Morals Clause gives them way too much power when they haven't really demonstrated that it's deserved. And they've used it in the past against the same groups they're claiming to try to protect. I think this is a big problem. I don't see why anybody should agree to the OGL 1.2 so long as this clause is there. How do you do business with a company that says, listen, we reserve the right to destroy everything you make. And that's really what the OGL is about, is about letting third-party people um, do business with wizards in an interesting fashion. Uh, wizards doesn't get direct payoffs from it, but it does increase the value of the of D, D that there's so much content out there. Meanwhile, these people are typically making beer money. I mean, there are some groups that are making a lot more than that, but your average person who's out there putting out content um, is either making nothing, there's lots of content out there where people are making just literally nothing, or they're making beer money. Um, that's sort of the usual thing. It so, But they're being asked to put a lot of time and effort into creating this content, or, you know, and then... It can just be yanked away from them based on nothing.
I don't think that's a good thing. I think that the uh, discussion around this is likely to end up being quite disingenuous in the sense that we are going to see and we already are seeing uh, that sort of accusation that people who are against the new 1.2 OGL um, are in some way terrible people. Anytime a company or a government is telling you, be afraid of these people and we need power to stop those people, it's probably, it's probably manipulation. Um, this happens all the time. Uh, we see bad laws pushed as like, we need this power to stop the terrorists or to protect children. You know, it's always, won't somebody please think of the children? Yeah. Anyway, um, as mentioned, I think this is a terrible, uh, terrible clause. I think that this clause in and of itself is the kind of thing that should get people to walk away from the table. I will not put out content under the, you know, the OGL 1.2, so long as this clause is in there because, you know, not because I think it's going to be discriminatory, but just because I think that the clause itself, um, gives them too much power to just take away every ounce of effort I've put into something and just strip that away. So let me know in the comments section below what you think. Um, thank you guys for watching. See you next time.